Good morning. It's a great Sunday as we get to uh, be together and worship. We do have a few announcements for you this morning. Uh, Wednesday, November 25th at 7 in the evening, there will be the Thanksgiving Eve service. Be sure to make that. Uh, next Sunday, there's a congregational meeting uh, to select the nominating committee, and, it, and there's also a really great study by Kyle Eidemann. Uh, so we encourage you to come out and enjoy that study. Uh, you heard uh, last week about the ladies' Christmas celebration. The sign-up sheets are still back on the board in the foyer, and there is now some additional information out there for you to take uh, so you know what to bring and what's kind of going on during that event. Uh, also back there, there are uh, your tithing envelopes. Be sure to grab those. And uh, my, my kids are making sure everybody knows there's uh, some free fruit back there to uh, enjoy as well. Uh, and with that, we get to worship the Lord together this morning. Give thanks with a grateful heart is on the front of your bulletin this morning. And that's exactly what we want to do, not just this week of Thanksgiving, but every time, give him praise. Would you stand and praise the Lord with us in song?
lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Alleluia. Praise the one who set me free. Alleluia. Death has lost its grip on me. we are so grateful that you are our living hope, that you are our everything. And in times of trial and, and temptation, Lord, you can guide us if we only look to you. Lord, we give you praise and glory for all that you are to each one of us. And we ask that everything that we do and say would bring honor and glory to your precious name. For it is in the name of your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good to see you this morning. We thank you for being here on this Sunday before Thanksgiving Day. It just doesn't seem possible that it's here already. Uh, we're going to uh, sing. Sing. You want to sing again? We're going to read... In Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, we're going to read verses 11 through 19. Luke chapter 17, 11 through 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back and praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet, thanked him, he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God 
except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Let's bow in prayer together. Our most gracious God, we thank you for this time this morning. You are a God worthy of our praise. And we thank you for all you've done for us. All that you have given to us. And Lord, we come to this time of a Thanksgiving season. And we, we certainly are thankful. We know that uh, the last uh, six, seven months have been, been trying. And uh, been difficult uh, to try and figure out what to do, when to do it, and what not to do. And uh, information's hard to come by as far as what can be trusted. But it's only you that we can trust. And Lord, we look to you for our guidance. We look to you uh, for your patience with us. We know that there are many opinions. And Lord, whatever, whatever decisions made, uh, someone has a, an opposite of opinion, uh, what needs to be done. But we praise you. Because we as a church, we want to follow you as the head of the church. We thank you for this morning together, and we just praise your holy name. We thank you for the offering that's been given. Lord, may we use it wisely. May we use it here at the Cory Lyons Church to reach, to reach people for you. May we be a good influence in this community. When people see us uh, in town and going around town or in the stores or, or whatever we do, uh, may they see us and know that we're Christians, know that we're living for you, know that we're part of the Cory Alliance Church, and they know what the Cory Alliance Church stands for. And Lord, we just thank you for, uh, for your protection. We thank you for your wisdom. And Lord, we just give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you very much. That was beautiful and a very well-needed message. You know, um, life hasn't been easy the last few months. Not that it's easy all the time anyway. But let's face it, uh, we, 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 we live in a world where we don't know. We don't know what's going on most of the time. Uh, we see things, people have opinions, people go in different directions, people tell you one thing, people tell you another thing. And so it becomes, it becomes weary after a while and uh, kind, of hard, kind of hard to deal with at times. But you know, we, we Christians, we who believe in Jesus, we know who's in charge. We, we, know, we know who's at the helm. And uh, he said there were going to be days like this. He's told us. It's in the scriptures. And that doesn't make it any easier. Uh, but let's face it. We, we know the one we can trust. And we want to give him the glory. And we're in this Thanksgiving season. And, and, and we're in a Thanksgiving. And we, it's a time when families get together and people get together. And we got, we got officials telling us we're not supposed to get together. And don't get together with your family. Just call them on the phone. And you're going, Phew, what kind of Thanksgiving is that? You know? And, and that's all hard, and it's all difficult. And you're trying to make a decision on what to do, what not to do, what should we do, should we listen to it, should we do what we usually do. And, and it's, it's all hard, and it's wearing. But, you know, as we, as we go through this time, uh, Jesus tells us that he will never leave us, and he will never forsake us. And he's with us, he's with us every step of the way. Uh, so we can't, we can't let ourselves get down. We can't let ourselves... Uh, come to that point where it's just so difficult we we mope around and we're we're upset with everything all the time you know we have a lot to be grateful for we have a lot to be thankful for and we have thanks we have thanks in Jesus we have a great God who's in control of all things isn't he isn't he yeah so we give him the praise uh, a beautiful hymn that uh, I chose this morning just for this reason is to God be the glory for great things he has done let's all stand hymn number 29 
seated. Thank you. One of the uh, things that we teach our children as they're growing up is when uh, someone does something for them or somebody gives them something, we teach them to say thank you. Is that correct? We want our, our children to learn to say thank you. Now, why do we, why do we, why do we teach them that? Why, why do we teach them to say thank you? Well, we teach them that because... We want them to appreciate what's been given to them, but we want them to appreciate the person that gave it to them. We want them to be, have gratitude and thanks for what somebody has done for them. And we adults, we adults, when, when someone does something, uh, we should say a thank you. Now, when we say thank you, we're saying to them, I appreciate all you've done for me. But now we're living in a society where we don't always hear that. Do you agree, do you agree with that? We're living kind of in a society that doesn't seem to be very appreciative of what they have. Um, it's, it's more me and I, I deserve. I deserve what I have. So why do I need to be appreciative to someone? Because I, I deserve it. And I, I, I want it. And I want what I want. I want it like I like it. And I don't thank anybody for it. You see, and that permeates through society and into the minds as, of people, as, as we grow and mature, and as younger people come up, th they begin to be selfish, just like those who in front of them, and don't seem to appreciate what we have. Do we, do we, do we see a, a movement in, in our, our country that we don't appreciate our country? I think we see that. I'm not, I'm not saying with everybody, and I'm not saying with the majority. I think the majority appreciate our country, appreciate what we have, but we see, we see it, it growing that they're not happy, and they want everything changed and, and moved in a different direction. We well, see, God deserves our thanks. God deserves our thanks. In, in Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 13, uh, this, is a, this is a very familiar story. I remember of learning it in, in Sunday school and uh, when I was growing up, and I uh, heard, it, heard it many times. And I've, I've preached on this portion of Scripture before, and more of on the, the faith side of it instead of the thanks side of it. But here we have 10 people who have leprosy. Now, leprosy is a horrible, it's still in the world today, uh, leprosy is a horrible, horrible disease. We're, we're, we're here and we're, we're, we're scared stiff of COVID. And we, we, see it, we see it in people. They are scared to death of COVID. But let me see, this is a horrible disease also in that once you get it, very, very, very rarely do you get rid of it. It will go into emission, remission, I mean. It'll go into remission and, and slow down and, and, and even stop for a while. But it is a horrible disease. And what the disease does, if you don't know, it eats away at your flesh. And people who have leprosy in the horrible states, it'll eat your flesh away until ultimately you die. And it'll eat, it'll eat your fingers off, and you just have the bones there. It'll eat, it'll eat your face and your nose off and, and, and your forehead and, and down to the scalp. And, and it's just a horrible disease, and it, 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 it's a disease that eats away your flesh and, until you, you can't survive anymore. And what they used to do then, they used to take them and put them in a, a colony outside, outside the town or the city. And people who had leprosy had to stay out there. 
They were not allowed to come into the town or be around people. They weren't even allowed to be around their families. The family who fed them would take food out, drop it off at a spot. Then their family member who had leprosy would come pick it up and go back to the colony. So it was a horrible, horrible disease. Well, here... It says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, he was heading into, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. Of course, they stood at a distance. They were not allowed to approach anybody. They were not allowed to come near anybody who did not have the disease. And called out in a loud voice, Master Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Well, they'd heard about Jesus, and they'd heard about him healing, and they knew that he could do it, and they hollered out to him that he was coming by, and they stood there uh, at a distance, and they hollered out, Jesus, Jesus, have pity on us. Would you, would you heal us from this horrible, horrible disease? So they, they wanted to be, they wanted to be, healed from this terrible disease that they had in life. And they wanted to be saved from this uh, living this kind of life that they had to live outside the city with a group of people and as they were standing there watching the, their skin decaying on their bodies. And they knew that if someone was more, uh, more along in the disease than they were, that's what they were going to look like at some point. So, of course, they were reaching out to anybody and anything that could help them. Well, why, why wouldn't they? I mean, I would. You would. And so they had heard that Jesus healed. So now they wanted to be healed and they called out to him uh, to heal us from this, this horrible disease that we have. And they, 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 they hollered out to Jesus, fix, can you fix my problem? Can you fix what I'm going through? Please fix it. And they said it with a loud voice. They said it with a loud voice. <coughs> so that Jesus would, would hear them. They wanted to make sure he would hear them. And they called out with that loud voice and because Jesus stopped and took care of them. It says, have pity on us. Save me. And they had faith. They had faith that Jesus could do it. They had faith in Jesus. Now, how did they have faith? I, I know they had faith because, now, what, what would happen is, when it went into remission, when, when leprosy, if someone had it go into remission, before they could be announced clean from that disease at that time, they had to go to the priest. And the priest would declare them fit to go back into society. They didn't have get rid of the disease, but it was in remission and wasn't moving forward on their bodies at that time. So Jesus said to them, now this is, this is neat, and this is where their faith comes in, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak about faith next Sunday. It says in verse 14, when, they, when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priest. And what's interesting here, he said, go show yourself to the priest. He didn't say, you're healed. Now that you're healed, Go show yourself to the priest. No, what did he say? When he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, see, they weren't healed right then. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. So they were listening to Jesus, and they were on their way to the priest. And they didn't stay there and say, hey, uh, we need to be healed before we go to the priest. Uh, we're not going to the priest. We're not even moving in that direction until we're healed. You have to heal us before we can go to the priest. Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, see, they had to show faith. They headed off saying, whoa, this is going to be difficult. We're not, we're not healed, but we're heading to the priest. As they went, they were cleansed. See, there was, there was movement on their part. So here Jesus heals them. They're on their way to the priest. Do we have gratitude for what Jesus has done for us? We should thank Jesus every single day for what he's done for us. 
You stop and think of what he's done for us. Now, the, the, these lepers, they were healed. That's great. That's fantastic. But you see, Jesus, that, that was physical healing. Jesus heals us spiritually. When we call upon him, we call upon him, we say, Lord, I'm, I'm a sinner. Can, can you heal me? I have faith in you. I'm repenting of my sins. And Jesus, Jesus says, yes, because you have faith in me. For what Jesus has done. One of them, in verse 15, one of them, when he saw he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He was so excited. He was excited that he was healed. He came back and he thanked Jesus. How often do we thank Jesus for what he has done for us spiritually? Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He died for our sins. That is a huge miracle. And we have moved from death to life. And we should be praising, praising God. Or do we just take that so much for granted? Do we take it for granted? This man thanked him. It says in verse 16, he threw himself, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he, it says here, he was a Samaritan. Now that's significance also. Because a Samaritan, and Jesus was on the border, it said, of Galilee and Samaria. And Galileans did not get along with Samaritans because Samaritans had married, the Jewish people had married people there and they called them half-breeds. They didn't want anything to do with them. And so here he is, a Samaritan, and Jesus healed a Samaritan. And it's important, and it's important enough to know is that he was a Samaritan. So the Samaritan is the one who came back and thanked Jesus. He bowed at Jesus' feet. Now, I would think he would, correct? If you had a horrible disease like that and Jesus healed you, wouldn't you say, thank you? Well, wouldn't you? I, I would, my goodness. I would. It just seemed to be the thing that you should do. It's thank Jesus. Thank him. He threw himself, he threw himself at Jesus' feet. And he said, thank you. And we're saying, well, of course he did. He had this horrible disease. He was going to be out there in, 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 the, in the desert, out there in an area, uh, in a horrible uh, colony of other lepers. It was going to be a horrible death. It was going to be a horrible time, and Jesus, Jesus healed him. Of course, he was grateful. Of course, he was thankful. And of course, he came back, and he thanked Jesus for what he had done. But let me tell you something. What Jesus has done for you and for me is far greater than a physical healing. Far greater than a physical healing. Jesus died on a cross to pay the penalty for our sins. What grace, what mercy, what love. And all I have to do, all I have to do to spend eternity in heaven is, is believe in Jesus and what he's done and repent of my sins. And Jesus gives me everything, everything I need to live the Christian life. Saved from our sins is a huge miracle. We, we, we wonder about miracles. And I've seen, in my lifetime, I've seen miracles. I've seen miracles. Things that have happened that can only <clears throat> have happened because God did it. God took care of it. But the greatest miracle of all, the greatest miracle of all is Jesus and Jesus dying for my sins and me repenting of my sin and moving from death to life. That's a huge miracle. That is beyond our comprehension. And yet, do we thank Jesus? Do we go back and thank Jesus? Because you see, God, Jesus, is worthy of our praise. Why, why do you worship him? Why do we worship God? 
You ever saw that question? We, we, we come to church and we, we sing praises. We sing beautiful hymns. We, we listen to a message and we, we praise God. We, we call it a, a worship service. Well, why do, we, why do we worship God? You say, well, I, I don't know. We're just supposed to. But something, why do we worship him? Well, we worship him because he's worthy of it. He's worthy to be worshipped. He's holy. He's perfect. He's righteous. He's not egotistical. He's just. He is just. Do you thank and praise other people? Yes or no? Yeah, and that's the right thing to do. Correct. We just, we talked about that. It's the right thing to do. Somebody does something for you, thank you. Someone holds the door, well, thank you. You have a flat tire along the road and someone pulls over and helps you change the tire, you say, oh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Do you praise others? Do you, do you praise your children when they do something good? And it doesn't matter how, how old they are. If they, if they play a sport and they do great in that sport or they go out there, you say, hey, I'm proud of you. You did a great job. I'm praising you. Why? Because you're, you're praising them because they're, they're worthy of the praise of what they did. A spouse. You say, honey, that was a, that was a great meal tonight. Well, thank you for doing whatever it would have been. And, 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 and vice versa. Thank you uh, to, to the husband of fixing this or, or doing this. You're saying, hey, that was, that was great. I appreciate, I appreciate you doing that. Or friends. Friends do something for you and you say, oh, thank you. I, I really appreciate. I really appreciate that. Students, teachers and students. Hey, you did a good job on this test. Keep, keep, up, keep up the good work. And let me say this. How many, how many have a pet? Okay, just about everybody. When the pet does something bad on the rug, you're not happy. But when it goes outdoors, what do you do? Oh, such a good little puppy. You did such a good little job. I'm so proud of you. And you pet it and you bring it in and you give it a cookie or you give it a treat. You praise, you praise your pet. You praise your pet. What, what about God? <laughs> Do we praise him? Do we thank him? You see, being thankful helps you appreciate what you have. For what God has done. You see, God is self-sufficient. God does not need your praise to make him feel better. Do you understand that? God doesn't need our praise. God existed before we were ever created. But he does deserve it. Doesn't he? Yes. He deserves our praise. He deserves our thanks for all he's done for us. For all, for all we have. For what he's given to us. He deserves it. We thank him for Jesus, his son. We thank him for our Salvation and the miracle of our salvation. We thank him for the Holy Spirit that he has given to us and indwells us and helps us as we live the Christian life here on this, on this earth. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll never turn on you. Even though things get tough and things get rough and hard to deal with, I'm there for you. Sometimes we take our eyes off from Jesus or we take our eyes off from our Heavenly Father and we put them on what's going on in the world and so we lose sight just like Peter did when he stepped out of the boat. <clears throat> he started looking at the storm and began to sink because he took his eyes off from Jesus. 
And that sometimes in, in, in our lives, we get so caught up in the problems of the world and what's going on in this world, we take our eyes off from Jesus. We, we, we put them on our problems and we put them on the circumstances and then we begin to sink and we begin to get frustrated. We begin to get upset because we don't have our eyes on Jesus. And in Hebrews, we talked about fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on him. Don't, don't let the world drag you down. And the book of Hebrews was written to Christians who, <clears throat> who were being persecuted and being thrown in prison. And, and they say, fix your eyes on Jesus. We, we, we go through life and it's not easy. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. He said, I will comfort you. I will be there with you. I'm your shepherd. I will guide you. I will take you to green pastures. I will take you beside quiet waters. I am here for you. I have a rod and a staff. They're going to, they're going to protect you. They're going to comfort you. I will comfort you. No matter what you're going through in life, I am here for you. We, we, we should thank him for that, shouldn't we? We should praise him for that. But we don't have a, a, a thankful society. Now, I want you to know this right now. I want you to know this. Now, some people have set up all their Christmas decorations, and that's fine. That's fine. You can set up Christmas decorations. There's nothing wrong with setting up Christmas decorations. And I, I do think, I do think I see a lot more a lot earlier this year. And I think people are just trying to say, hey, it's a joyful time of the year. I need a little joy and I'm setting up my Christmas stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. But just don't forget Thanksgiving Day or the Thanksgiving time of the year, because it reminds us to be thankful for all that we have. We are to worship and praise Jesus. And worship and praise isn't just these beautiful choruses that we're, we sang together this morning. That's not, we're going to have worship and praise. Okay, we have worship and praise. We sing some choruses, so we're done worship and praise. No, we worship and we praise God every, every moment of the day and thanking him for all that he's done for us. Worship and praise includes being thankful. It includes being thankful. Jesus was not surprised when the man came back to thank him. The man did what he was supposed to do. He praised God. He worshiped Jesus. He, he bowed at his feet, thanking him and showing the appreciation that, that, that God deserves. But Jesus was questioning the nine who didn't come back. Because the scripture says, you came back, where, what, about the other, what about the other nine? Where, where are they? We worship and we are thankful to God, our Heavenly Father. In verse 18, was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Is he a foreigner? He came back and praised God. And what did Jesus say to him? What did Jesus say to him? Then he said to him, in verse 19, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. <clears throat> rise. We are supposed to grow in our faith. When, when we come to Jesus and, and, and we praise him for what he's done for us, we're to get up and we're to go. We're to get up and we go to tell others. Now, I, I want you to know something. <clears throat> it doesn't say in the scriptures what this man did. So you have to be very careful. You have to be careful. You don't want to put into scripture what scripture doesn't say. All right? So you got to be careful there. But I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that that man got up and went out and told people, I had leprosy and now I don't. Do you, think, do you think maybe he did that? And Jesus, Jesus did it. Do you think he said that? I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure he did. <clears throat> Someday you might be able to ask him. But I'm going to jump to that conclusion. You have to be careful to jump to conclusions in Scripture. But I'm thinking he had leprosy. He was doomed to die. He was doomed to live a horrible life horrible life and Jesus healed him and he praised Jesus he worshiped Jesus I am sure he was pretty excited about having 
his leprosy gone. He didn't get up and go back to his family and keep it a secret. He couldn't because they're saying to him, why are you back and want, where's the leprosy? He said, well, <clears throat> it just disappeared. No, he's going to say, Jesus, Jesus healed me. <clears throat> I know that. So we, we come to Jesus and he heals us spiritually. He's moved us from death to life. <clears throat> from death to life. Why don't we go tell people? Why aren't we excited about it? Why aren't we happy? And say, hey, unbelievable what Jesus has done for me. <clears throat> or are we like the other nine? We're healed and we just go off. No, I'm not saying people didn't see them and people didn't want to know what happened to them. <clears throat> but they didn't come back and worship Jesus and praise Jesus. And I think that happens today. I think people just take things for granted. Jesus did it. Well, he did it. So I'm off and running. But do we, do we go back and praise Jesus and thank Jesus? You see, our faith in Jesus has made us well. We need to praise God, worship him, because he deserves it. He deserves it. He created us to have a relationship with us. And that's what he wants. He's not standing up there in heaven or sitting on the throne in heaven and saying, well, I created these people so they'll bow down to me. I created these people so that they'd worship me because I need it. I, my ego is so big that I need it. No, that, that's not God. God. God wants us to worship him because we love him and for what he's done for us. And so that we will appreciate what we have. And so we thank him. Now, I, I can go on and on, on and on, about our salvation and thanking God for our salvation. And if it stopped right there, and that's all we had, and all that the Lord has done for us is our salvation, that would be enough to praise him. But he has given us so much. We, we, we have so much to thank him for. Do we show gratitude for what we have, or do we just take it for granted that we have it? The more we praise him, the more we praise him. There's a beautiful hymn, Count Your Blessings. Name them one by one. And it says, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Sometimes we take it for granted. We don't think about what God's done for us. And so we need to count them, count them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Lord, we thank you and praise your holy name. You are worthy of our praise. May, may we never become so complacent that we just take it all for granted and not praise you and thank you for what you have given to us. We just praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> 573, 573. Come, ye thankful people, come. Let's stand.
Father, we just thank you for all that you've given to us and everything that you've done for us. May we never become complacent. May we never just take it for granted. May we just always praise you and thank you and, and worship you because you deserve it. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen.